all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Today, let's continue our discussion on keels. Now, in the previous video, we discussed full keels. There is a link in the description below to that video. Today, let's talk fin keels. As stated in the last video, the keel of your vessel is one of, if not the most important choice you can make when choosing your sailing vessel. The fin keel has several variations, including the bulb keel and wing keel. We will discuss them all here today. As with just about every aspect of sailing, each has its pros and cons. My goal today is simply to share the knowledge you will need to determine what keel will work best for you and your cruising needs. The most important aspect of choosing a keel type for your sailing vessel is to just be honest with yourself about your cruising goals, experience, and wants. There is no perfect sailboat for everyone. There will be compromises to be made in several categories. The goal is to make the least amount of compromises possible. The only way to do that is by being honest with yourself. If you want to someday complete a circumnavigation of the globe, then your goal should be to buy a vessel you can grow into versus out of. At the end of this series, you should have all the information you need to make the correct vessel choice that will meet your sailing goals long term as well as short term and minimize the amount of compromises you need to make. As we continue through this series, starting from the ground up, I hope to be able to provide you with all the information needed to make your own choices and choose the keel that fits your needs. I am hoping to be able to get you on the water sooner than later and save you money in the process. Ah, the fin keel, the most commonly found keel type on the market today. It was initially introduced in 1891. Yes, that's correct, 1891. The fin keel offers the best performance of all keels. However, just like every other keel on this list, there is a compromise to be made. There's also a bulb keel, which is just a variation of the fin keel with an additional ballast located on the tip of the keel. And there is also the wing keel, another variation. And this one has two tips at the end, giving the vessel a feel of a much larger keel. Generally, the heavier your keel, the less heel you will get. However, today that's kind of changing is now the beam on vessels is generally carried far aft. That means the width of the vessel is generally carried all the way to the back end. This increases overall weight, again reducing some of the healing. So what is a fin keel? Well, a fin keel is a long, weighted blade that is connected to the bottom of the boat's hull to provide stability. In comparison to a full keel, it's lighter, faster, and more agile but it's also more vulnerable. In addition, the greater the distance between the ballast and the sails act as a lever, which reduces the requirement for a big wetted surface area as found on full keels, and it also reduces the need for an additional ballast. For the most part, fin keels are bolted onto the hull and have a deeper, thinner profile than a full keel. They are significantly lighter. This contributes to improving performance significantly and resulting in fin keels that are significantly faster in all scenarios of sailing. Fin keels do have their disadvantages. In comparison to full keels, fin keels can be significantly less comfortable depending greatly on the vessel design itself. Fin keels are far more fragile than full keels. If you run aground with a fin keel, you will have some serious issues at hand. They don't call full keels reef busters for nothing. The bulb keel variation. A bulb keel is a fin keel with a high aspect ratio that adds an additional ballast at the end of the keel. This is often shaped like a bulb or a teardrop, hence giving it the name a bulb keel. This ballast enhances stability by acting again as a lever, utilizing the distance between the force and the counter force. Because of its design, there is no need for a deep fin, which results in a much shallower draft on bulb fin keels. Bulb keels are extremely useful for cruising because they place the weight at the farthest possible distance from the force acting on the sails, requiring only a small amount of additional weight to achieve the same reduction in heel. The bulb keel design minimizes the wetted surface area while just slightly increasing the weight of the keel, resulting in a significant boost in sailing comfort for the vessel. Again, each keel form has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. Therefore, there is no such thing as the ideal keel for every boat. The optimum keel for you and your boat is completely dependent on the type of sailing that you intend to accomplish. It has often been stated that fin keels are made to outrun a storm and full keels are made to weather a storm. 
In heavy weather, a full keel sailboat will be much, much slower, whereas a fin keel sailboat will be faster, however, more lively, and have the ability to slice through the waves versus roll on top of them. You won't have any problems weathering a fin keel in a storm, but you will not be as comfortable as you would be in a full keel boat. However, that does depend heavily on what you consider comfortable. Rolling and bobbing all over with a full keel or slicing through the waves with a fin keel and slapping. Again, something to consider is the newer technology. With the advancements made in weather prediction, as well as the ability to obtain these weather reports, you should not be getting caught often in bad weather. You of course will at some point. However, I do suggest choosing your sailboat based on what you will be doing 90% of the time, not something that has a small percentage chance of happening to you. Pros and cons of the fin keel, in general and sailing to windward. The pros, a fin keel does have excellent tracking, its high pointing capabilities to the wind, light steering, the ability to slice through heavy seas, and the ability to carry your weight through the tacks. They also heave too well and resist rounding up. Some of the cons are, with the high volume combined with the light weight, they can absolutely be lively. Depending on the beam and design of the vessel, there can also be slamming. Helming can require more work, as again, they are very lively depending on the seas. My personal motto with fin keels is to reef early and reef often. Sailing downwind with fin keels. Some of the pros, they are very, very fast. These also surf and surf easily. Sometimes they can even plane. Now some of the cons downwind are, if you're unfamiliar with this type of design, they can broach. They are tiring to control in heavy weather and they require a lot of concentration depending on the conditions. When under power, some of the pros are, these are very, very precise, highly agile, and the maneuverability is second to none. They handle the same astern as a head. However, some of the cons are, they are susceptible to beam winds, and an unattended helm can slam over suddenly. Some of the pros and the cons on the wing keel design of the fin keel. These do have a shallower draft, they have good riding momentum, greater efficiency, and motion is more consistent with a larger, heavier vessel. Some of the cons are, you will absolutely be grabbing lobster pots if you're sailing in areas where these are abundant. Drying them out can be a bit risky in yards that are not as professional as we would always like. And cleaning the underside is a bit of pain. Now, the bulb keel version of the fin keel. This variation basically takes the best of the two previous versions, combines them into one, eliminates several of the cons, and improves on several of the benefits. This style is basically the superhero of fin keels. Now again, in summary, what keel you decide on should be entirely based on your long-term sailing goals. The fin keel can be an amazing choice. It will get you anywhere you need to go. It's highly efficient, fast, and maneuverable. It is no surprise that these style keels have taken over the sailing fleet. Now, if you plan to be sailing somewhere uncharted and are hoping to wing it around through various islands, this may not be the best keel choice for you. If you plan on running into a whale in the ocean, I would suggest a full keel. However, in reality, these are much faster. So in the long run, if you do decide to go with a fin keel and are gonna be sailing long passages, the running cost of these will be far, far lower. Proper maintenance is absolutely required with a bolt-on fin keel. If you are someone who lets maintenance slack a bit, do not get a bolt-on fin keel. These are the most successful designs in the charter fleet where shallow waters, reefs, and numerous unaccounted for dangers lurk below. It's more about paying attention and maintenance with this keel design. If done properly, these are absolutely fantastic. Be honest with your sailing goals, finances, and just take your time. The more time we spend getting the foundation of our sailing future correct, the easier this transition will be and the more correct vessel we will end up purchasing. Now, if you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, I now offer one-on-one -on -one consulting available at my website, chasinglatitudes.com. In addition to the one-on-one -on -one consult with myself, you also get access to our private members area where I'm available to chat almost 24-7 with anything sailing related, as well as several hundred members all willing to help you save money in the process of getting on the water. And if you're a budget sailor like myself, I do have a discount code linked below to the American Sailing 
Association membership. If you become a member to the American Sailing Association, you do open up dozens and dozens of other discounts that, again, will all save you money in the world of sailing. Both are fantastic options, and you should check them out now. The more you know who you are, the more you know.